Let the Flick reviews the finale of The Walking Dead Season 6, The Last Day on Earth. Is that what it's called? Or Last, Last Day, Day on, on Earth. Earth. Last okay, Day. so this has become a very controversial finale. And I'm going to let you start with that right after I introduce you. This is Tim, this is Francis, and this is Kim. I'm Kim, I'm the girl. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, this episode, 90 minutes long, special. Um, a lot of it was very slow for me, but I think you liked it leading up until the last minute. Okay, so I'll say uh, a couple things here. I liked most of this episode. I thought it was well paced. I thought it was well constructed. Some people will hate me for saying this, but I think that it reminded me a lot of 33 minutes from bat one of the best episodes of Battlestar Galacta and best episodes of television ever made. Just that, that feeling of dread and helplessness as your, your opponent is always one step ahead of you and always right on your heels and knows exactly what's gonna happen. Everything that you do is futile. I just got that sense of dread in this episode when they were in the camper driving around. They kept hitting these obstacles and like we really got to see the full sense of who the saviors are and their power in this new world mm -hmm. on what could be someone's last day on earth. They're yeah. like, ex like lots of flexing from the, um, from the saviors. And it was cool and it was impressive. Mm -hmm. That part of this episode I thought was really good. You mean with the roadblocks? The, the roadblocks, yes. The... Like every time they turn a corner and there's just All like right, I'll give you 50 that. guys standing there on top of their cars and there's nothing you can do. They have you outmanned and outgunned and there's no way around. You have to the back whistling up. The scene yeah. was also terrifying. Yes, yeah. in, in the woods. Oh, encroaching, so good. Creeping up and we, we pull out to see a wider shot of more and more people, more and more uneasy whistling. Mm -hmm. I, I did appreciate that part. Uh, what do we feel about uh, Carol and her journey out and Morgan following her, finding the horse, finding the knights? Eh. Wishing for death. There, there was nothing wrong with that storyline. It's the reason I had to sit through a 90 minute episode. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because had we just stayed with the camper, it would have been a tight, you know, 45 to 60 with commercials yeah. and exciting. I think that if you, the, the previous two episodes, the filler episodes, I would say, that were leading up to this false suspense, that they had to create this scenario. You weren't here the last time, Tim, but this is what I was stating they were trying to do. And the last episode is taking away crucial members of the group to create. Vulner to create some sense of vulnerable, uh, I don't know, point of view in the group where they're outmanned, outnumbered, and they don't have their strongest personas. I think if they still had everyone in their group, they, it would have given it more a better effect if they had everyone who was st and still outmanned by the saviors and still outsmarted by the saviors. I feel like the last couple episodes were just not needed, just to kind of weaken the group, but the saviors would have outnumbered them anyway and would have forced them into that uh, area of weakness no matter what because they had every they had their plan set out from the get-go so I feel like the last two episodes were kind of a waste I feel like we didn't get any really idea on what was going on with Daryl and Glenn I think uh, in, you know, in that I group was I think really that was the idea. I see more from Daryl and Glenn and, and we barely saw you know I think Glenn got a little more yeah, but that they idea didn't have that much to do in this each, episode. Each kind of jump cut where they, they had that lighting and it was if someone was trapped I sensed it was them right and I did get that effect but I I, I am with you. Like There was good parts of this group. I just think we're being a little kind to it because the season as a whole was on the up, but I have, was so disappointed in, in the way it was formatted that I felt like it was, it was to create this false sense of fear. When I would have already been scared if they were just to develop it as in stick with how the saviors were going to outsmart them and don't do, gener like, generate this false sense of fear by taking crucial members of the group away when they didn't have to go anywhere like removing Carol when she didn't have to do that. Like there was all movements that members of the group wouldn't do in their normal state of mind. So and let's, that's what, let's that's talk about that. And it's more than just the last couple episodes. It's the last eight episodes. It's this whole half season. And all the actions have led up to this scene in the woods yep. with 11 people on their knees. Lots of questionable decisions, lots of strange, unexplainable things happening. Mm -hmm. Not to smart decisions. To lead to this scene. This is the scene that we've been building up for eight episodes. The yeah. introduction of Negan, the introduction of Lucille. Somebody's going to die. It has to be one of these 11 people. They went through great lengths to get these random 11 people here. Not and random. there's no payoff. Okay, here's the thing. We've been building up to the end of the season with Negan. We've been primed to fear him, to expect something terrifying, and then we get it. There's no payoff. We have his honey sweet, you know, delivering of, oh, that sucks, man. That's not cool, you know? And we yeah. think, oh, he's not so bad. Negan is someone we're, we're supposed to hate immediately because he takes someone we like away from us and someone the group loves away from them. 
we don't know who that is and we're not going to know for months and yeah. that's maddening. So maybe the writers thought that this would be a really dramatic cliffhanger that we'd all they talk about. They already did it with Glenn on the dumpster. Why? Right. It's, yeah. been, it's been an eight episode long build up. It should have a release. And yes, you could talk, you, we could argue about the benefits of cliffhangers versus showing, but I want you to think of how effective the Red Wedding was and how effective Viper versus the Mountain I We agree. never forgot those episodes. It was, it was shocking. It left jaws dropped. Yes. And all they had to do was turn the camera around, let that scene play out for one second, and the whole tone of our review and the next six months is different. Yeah, because. We can't stop talking about it. Yeah. Who and they I, killed. Yeah, and that's the thing. He's like, in in the, the post reaction for it on the Talking Dead, I wanted to just get how I, I felt. I Did felt defeated, watch? so I wanted to know okay. what the executive producers were saying, and uh, the executive producers, Robert Kirkman, were saying, oh, we wanted to create this this idea for the next season, and how, the, how is the group going to react to this death, and how is it going to no, play no, an impact? No, no. We you don't know do who fucking here. died, so how are they going to know who reacted to so it? So there's, there's one of... I can only see two reasons to not show us who died. They one, his... it's somebody stupid that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Eric, I think his name is. Um, like oh, the, Eric. I mean, even the, characters the who one, are lower the, stake characters, even uh, like Abraham, Sasha. Right. You know? So it, the, the death doesn't matter, and they're too afraid to pull off the plot armor of Glenn or Carl Because, or yes, Rick. this show has a mythology. Michonne, yeah. We know where it should go based on the comics, but it's, it's made it go, make us think it's going all over the place. Yeah. Or they couldn't decide. Oh, they're going to they be like... They couldn't figure it out. They're in contract negotiations with actors. They weren't sure what they wanted to do. And they're like, ah, give us another six months. We'll decide and it'll be great, I yeah. promise. And by the way, I'm not just like one of the fanboys that needs to see the blood, guts, and gore of each season finale, right? But if you're going to play into that, then at least follow through with it, right? And it's not like the saviors outsmarted the group and, and are so petrifying that they have every corner... Uh, covered to the point where the group had nowhere to go. It was the group's stupidity that led them into that vulnerable situation. So I'm not afraid of Negan's group because I think they can be overcome because if, if, if Rick's group were just a little bit smarter and didn't act solely on reaction and were a little bit more rational, they could have come up with a plan. So it was there how irrational they were from four or five episodes back from Carol and her runaway bride scene and then because of uh, Daryl's re uh, reason to try and deal with Denise. These are out of character I would say actions that forced them into this situation. So I thought it was a little short change. I was thinking, okay, right, the saviors obviously are a little bit scary. And by the way, I loved um, the actor for Negan. I thought Jeffrey he played. Dean I thought Morgan. he was great. I thought the acting saved the episode. I think for the first time we have we seen Rick really petrified. I was every scene on him. I was anxious because he was helpless, and I understand that. That's what kept me involved, but it's still, I felt like there, there was so many different ways to create this suspense other than just a short, kind of cheap way of being like, all right, we'll remove people from the group and then we'll have them fall into this situation where they're outnumbered. Did you yeah. like that golden eye point of view shot with the blood coming down? <laughs> that was interesting. I, I didn't. Yeah, that was garbage. <laughs> uh, I'll disagree with you a little bit, uh, Francis, because I think they did a good job of showing how strong the saviors are and how menacing they are with a stellar performance by not only Jeffrey D. Morgan but also Stephen Ogg, Trevor from Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Like, Le oh my oh, gosh, that group. was yeah. Trevor? Right? So good. right? <laughs> how scary was he at every turn? Hey, I hope you're treating your group well. It'd yeah. be a shame if, if today was the last day. I'd like, so menacing, so scary. Well, I yeah. got and, excited for a and second. And then the performance of Andrew Lincoln at the end totally stupefied yeah. like in, in any other time we'd see we'd see him grit his teeth and be like i'm gonna kill you i don't know how but somehow like he is lost he has completely lost the fight yeah. and uh, a stellar performance out of him saying nothing yeah. kneeling on the ground no, i agree he that yeah, this is insurmountable yeah but i but i think that we, I, I agree with that if we had just been introduced if this if our group well the alexandrians then that works. But our group have got out of such adverse situations that are almost unrealistic, but if you're gonna play that, 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 that hand with our group, then you need to expect them to act more rationally in the situations, well aware that the saviors are out there. They, they, they've run into them how many times now? But we've never, we've never seen this. We've never many. seen this. Like, but they're, they're always, always there. Like this, I mean, this is hundreds an obstacle, of guys. But they're not an unbeatable obstacle. Okay, so hundreds of guys with great organization predicting where they're going at every stop and having more than enough manpower to even go with what yeah. is the group's plan like, like D, E, or Like when they were making this plan F. at Hilltop, 
they could have never known it would be like this. No, so how many, how no they hit their numbers very well. Okay. I mean, you were right, though, about them seeming like almost unrealistic, like superhero, unkillable, Fast and Furious yeah. type characters. I think it would have been a great gambit to just, like, show us who died. So we'd be like, oh, my God. They are not unbeatable. They're yeah. flesh and bone. This is awful. We we seen we seen it this the mid season uh, premiere I believe when uh, Daryl blew up several of them. We seen them go to their headquarters and just strategically demolish and uh, and another large amount of them. We seen um, another large amount of them come into Carol in uh, Maggie's death dungeon and be blown up. But then they still keep coming. I think that gives a sense that there's a larger amount of these people because no, if you're going to demolish them I thought time we and time most again, of them by now. that's the thing. No. But that's the thing is that's where the group needs. To, I would if I, if you're if you're attacking a group, an antagonist who keeps coming back into your grounds, then you must have this this thought that there might be a bunch of them or they're very strategic because why else would they keep coming back? Like the governor's group, they attack them all at once, and we've seen their firepower all at once. But the saviors consistently were putting themselves in the front line of fire against Rick's group. So I thought, if you're Rick's group at this point, who have been around the block several times, you should be aware that this group have definitely got an edge. There's something there about them that you need to be strategic. You can't chase out uh, the group and go and try and avenge Denise's death just because you, you, find, you find it hard to deal with. And I thought Daryl would have understood that a little bit more and not put them into that situation. So I might just be a unique perspective on that and think that it was a little shortchanged. I would have liked to see them overcome Rick's group at full strength and not just be given this kind of vulnerable, easy option to take over them. I can't stop fantasizing about how that scene could have played out and we just see someone get their head bashed in with Lucille. In my mind, I want it to be Glenn. And because how powerful that scene would be and the different conversation we'd be having right I now. I think it's certainly written because Glenn made the biggest mistake during yeah. the, you know, line him up thing by freaking out over Maggie. Rick also made a mistake. I mean, yeah, I mean, it was Pee Pants City. What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Pee -Pants. Thanks, Tim. Very evocative. Who, who, who do you guys want it to be? I, I felt myself going into this. I would be thinking about that. But now I'm just thinking... Doesn't matter. It doesn't, I feel it doesn't matter. matter. I, feel it doesn't probably, matter. I mean, answer. it may not even answer. be decided. It may not even matter at this point. It, it, I wish I would have some, something to talk about about who got killed and why this matters and what can happen next. But the stakes are gone. I feel yeah, that's a good point to make. I feel like I feel like at the end, if they showcase someone like Glenn face the punishment and the wrath of Negan, then it would have kind of tied everything up and be like, okay, they have actually paid, paid the punishment of being irrational and making decisions that they shouldn't have. And Glenn now would be the one who would go down a significant character. It would be horrible in front of everyone's eyes. We'd be like, oh my God, they're, they're so weakened now. How can they possibly bounce back? But as you mentioned, they've kind of shortchanged us where we're like, we, we don't know who it is and we don't really care anymore. I don't think I care. I mean, going into season seven, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who they decide. But I have got a small feeling that it is going to be a character that isn't as significant. Someone who we don't like so, as much. No, no just not Abraham, like him. But, but Sasha you don't, and Eric. I, Abraham and it Sasha. It sounded like a man breathing, but you know what? Again, I think these clues don't mean anything. They, they right. set and up they, a bunch. They wanted to give us just enough clues that we could talk about yeah. in the next six I just, months. Well, they I set don't up, feel motivated. They set know? up enough. I don't care. They did standard Walking Dead style where they set up enough story arcs during the episode to make us think that it could have been Abraham. Or it could have been Eugene because he suddenly felt a sense of yeah, they did togetherness have that scene. where he was happy that he was being involved. Those and we all, knew, we all knew where he was going, driving a, an RV around by himself. How is that going to pan out? That's the thing. And it could be any of those guys. And I still feel like at the end it's not going to have the same effect it would have had as if they just had some balls. No balls. No balls. Correct you are. More balls needed for The Walking Dead Season <laughs> 7, which we will talk about maybe if we're maybe. not all full of hatred. Uh, in a few months. Calm down we'll for that about point. Uh, okay, audience, discuss. Good acting, though. Have fun. We'll see you later, maybe.